Hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman, and welcome to Dare to Hear Podcast, where we equip you and challenge you to dare to hear the voice of God. Well, I am really excited to share with you my new book, Legacy, The Lost Art of blessing. And I know that I've been giving some advertisements. The book came out in September. I'm super excited because it hit number one in the hot new release category in one of them. And uh, we stayed there and within the top 100 for a little while. So it was really exciting. So thank you to everybody who's already purchased legacy, the lost art of blessing, but it would make a perfect Christmas gift or stocking stuffer. I'm just going to put that little plug in there, but I wanted to talk with you about some of the stuff of the book. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm actually going to um, have my mom on. We're going to talk about uh, the importance of legacy and blessing other people. I'm going to have Brandy back on. Um, I'm trying to convince her to come back on so you guys can leave comments or send emails so that I can show her. Um, Hopefully I'll get her to record as well because she um, was part of, you know, she's reaped the benefits of speaking blessings and she's watched this happen. And uh, so hopefully we'll have her back on, but I want to take some concepts that are in the book and really talk to you about legacy, the lost art of blessing and the importance really of the blessing today. And it really is a lost art. I'm sure you're wondering, well, okay, why are blessings a legacy and why is it a lost art? So when you think about blessings, the biblical blessings of the Bible, and I go into, are they biblical? Are they for today? What is the difference between the Jewish culture and today? Why are they so important? How how do we go about doing it? And, and can we do it just for our family? Is it just uh, to leave a legacy for our family or can we do it in the marketplace? Can we do marketplace ministry? Which if you know me, I'm all about the marketplace ministry. So, but here's this question, like what if you could leave a legacy that's able to impact not just your children and grandchildren, but generations to come. And that really is what the legacy, the lost art of blessing is all about. It's all about the ripple effect that can happen through your descendants to heal, restore, and draw draw people to Christ and a blessing can speak life into people's situations, just like the um, gift of prophetic encouragement book that I wrote. Um, This is really the power of our words. So this book is 17 years in the making. Yes. 17 years in the making. The Lord began to speak to me in um, early two thousands and you can do the math. Um, when I was standing in line at the post office, so I uh, used to work for a small ministry and people would order products and materials and books and pamphlets and things. And I would have to go to the post office and I'd have to mail them out. And I was standing um, in the post office on a busy, uh, rainy day and the post office was packed. I always tried not to go at lunchtime. I always tried not to go on certain days because it was always busy. But this particular day I had to go. It was really busy and I'm standing standing there in line and we all take this post office. You took numbers. You didn't stand in line because you know, then we'd be out the door and around the corner. So we took numbers and we're, I'm standing around and I'm listening to this guy and he was my favorite because my favorite uh, postal worker. So I always loved it when I could get him. In fact, if there, I had the opportunity, I always chose to go to Mark, but um, he's standing there and this lady starts sneezing and he's like, God bless you. And every time she sneezed, he said, God bless you. And I was like, I'm thinking to myself, can he do that? Can he say, God bless you? Not could he bless her, right? Not could he, not can he, like she's sneezing. So of course that's the thing that comes out of our mouth. Well, today, most people don't actually say, God bless you. So if you're one of those, I want to challenge you to actually say, God bless you, because there is an importance when we use the Lord's name, we're saying, I'm going to intentionally put God's name on this so that he can intentionally target you for good. So I challenge you, if you just say, bless you when somebody sneezes, add the word God bless you to it because you're saying, I'm going to be intentional about this. So I'm standing there in the post office. I'm waiting for my number to be called. And I'm watching this as this lady starts sneezing and she was sneezing multiple times. And every single time, Mark, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And there's this dialogue in my mind saying, can he really do this? Should he be doing this? Can he do this? Like, oh my goodness, isn't he going to get in trouble? He works for the government. There's supposed to be a separation of government and state. He's going to get in trouble. She's going to complain. And then I was like, 
And the Holy Spirit started talking to me and he said, he is intentionally targeting her for good, whether he recognizes it or not. And so what do you, what do you mean, Debbie? How can you intentionally target someone for good? Well, if you read the famous blessing of the Bible at a numbers chapter six, which I dive into exactly what those mean in the book. But if you look at that at the very end, he said to, to, um, Aaron and his sons, I want you to put my name on them because I will bless them. If you put my name to this, if you speak my name over them, I will surely bless them. And so here's this pattern of what we see God doing. And we see the importance of blessing throughout the Old Testament scriptures of when, um, Jacob and Esau got the blessing from their father. Even when Joseph blessed his children and his grandchildren, there was power. There was an importance that it was, it was a commodity, if you will, in the spiritual realm to receive the blessing from the um, patriarch of the family being passed down for generations to come. Because when they spoke it, then God would see it come to pass. Even God blessed creation and said it was good. When he made man, he blessed them and said it was good. And so here we have this concept of blessing and we need to understand that it's important, just as important today as it was then. And we need to be speaking and releasing blessings over individuals. So again, what does it mean? Holy Spirit started talking to me about this woman sneezing in the post office. And I'm thinking, can he do this? He's going to get in trouble. I don't want Mark to get fired. I want him to be able to you know, keep working there. Cause he's my favorite. And so Holy Spirit starts talking to me, Debbie, when you bless other people, whether they know me or not, what you are doing is intentionally opening up a spiritual door in the spirit realm for Holy Spirit to send Holy Spirit arrows of blessing to intentionally target them for good. And I was like, what, what do you mean by this? God, this is amazing. Like I was beginning to think about this and cause I do a lot of marketplace ministry. I minister to a lot of people and sometimes, you know, um, this is before I knew about treasure hunting, the supernatural treasure hunting. And this is much earlier than, than I knew too much about the prophetic. I was kind of new to the prophetic. Um, I really, you know, I mean, I'd been doing it, but mostly in churches, not really in the marketplace, you know, cause I was in my early twenties when I really, I'd always been prophetic. And if you've heard any of my other podcasts, you know, we've talked about just kind of my life that I was a discerning child and, um, but nobody really could tell me about the prophetic and, and that I was hearing from God or I was seeing things in the supernatural or the spirit realm. Um, I just had a vivid imagination. And so it really wasn't until I was in my early twenties that I came to understand about this gift of the prophetic and what God had put in me. And I began to step out in it and I began to walk in it. And I began to um, really begin to explore different avenues of what the Lord was teaching me. And he started talking to me about intentionally blessing people, just like he did with the famous blessing out of the Bible in uh, Numbers chapter six, where, you know, he's going to make his face shine upon you. He's going to be gracious to you. And if he says to Aaron and his sons, if you will say this to the children of Israel, I will put my name on them and I will bless them. And so we know that there are power in our words alone. Um, in Proverbs 18, 21, it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. So if scripture is talking about this, we also can go to James chapter three and see that our tongue can catch a fire and it can cause a lot of damage or a lot of good. And so we need to be thinking about what is it that God is calling us to do? He's calling us to be intentional about speaking life, speaking blessings, speaking encouragement and comfort an exhortation to one another, but not only that, but he wants us to open spiritual doors to intentionally target people for good. And so he can do it. He just needs us. We're his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece. And he asks us, would you be willing to speak blessings and impart open spiritual doors and impart spiritual truths to people, whether they even know me or not. And so 
that was like in the early 2000s when the Lord started speaking to me about this. And then I had the opportunity to actually really begin to teach prophetic classes. I was teaching to people how to hear from God and how to step out in the prophetic and teaching people on our uh, prayer and ministry teams at the church. This is how you hear God prophetically uh, when you're praying for people. And so I was teaching these classes and we began to realize and understand that people um, it's It was different. Um, I've since developed my own curriculum um, that I've been teaching for the last 15, 16 years um, of that. But we realized that people were hungry for more. They didn't want to just know about this is how we step out. This is how we minister prophetically. They wanted to know more about it. They wanted opportunity. And so uh, the people that I was teaching class with, we realized that we needed to come up with kind of a part two. And so I remember um, Papa Carl, I talk about him a lot in the book because he was really um, instrumental in this and his wife, Donna and I, um, we taught now Papa Carl was um, a board member, a council member at the church. He and his wife had been there. Um, Papa Carl since passed on to be with the Lord, but his wife, Donna is still very much alive and she still attends that church. And so they were very key members of this church. And I was teaching this class with them. And I remember him saying, we need a part two, Debbie, but what are we going to talk about? And I remember so excitedly saying, I want to talk about blessings. God's been teaching me about blessings. And he was like, are they even biblical? Are they even for today? And kind of, he was playing the devil's advocate because he wanted um, me like challenge accepted really from me, right? Challenge accepted. But at the same time, he also had questions because he hadn't really heard people besides what you read in scripture, bless other people and or intentionally bless other people. And so he started to speak to me about this and say, okay, well, Debbie, then you're going to have to prove to me that one that they're for today, one that they're biblical, where are they coming from? And then what are you going to teach on? And so I challenge accepted. I started um, going to work on pulling things together. And I actually developed this teaching really that, that, God wants us like we're missing, we're missing this piece of blessing other people. Now at the time, I just simply called it speaking and pronouncing blessings. If you've taken my dare to hear part two classes, you've gotten um, the training. The book is actually more developed than the, the quick teaching that I teach in that, but it's so important that we understand that it's so powerful when we speak the heart of God to other people. And it's powerful and life changing when we can open spiritual doors for the Holy Spirit to go do what the Holy Spirit does best. You know, the Bible says that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He's always with us. And so we need to realize that that's the Holy Spirit wooing people, right? And sometimes he uses you and I to come in and to speak something or to bless something in somebody that we see. And it just opens this Holy Spirit door and Holy Spirit arrows are now intentionally going towards these people and targeting them for good. So I want to talk a little bit too about the power of our words, right? Because if the power of our words, there's life and death in the power of our words, but also Proverbs 12, 18 says this reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. And so, you know, I mean, as kids, we used to sing, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words are never going to harm me farthest from the truth is such a lie from the pit of hell, because while our bones can mend and heal, our words do damage. They do so much damage. And, you know, I, I teach when I teach on the power of our words, there is this meme and maybe you've seen it. It's this young little boy and his eyes have these little brown, big eyes. And that there's all these words that are written with a hand that's coming around the throat. And it's got all these different words written on it, words of hate and hatred. And I hate you. And I'm angry at you and you're stupid. And there's all these things, right? And these words are choking that those are what our words do when we speak words of hate and destruction um, and, and words of death over people. And so we need to understand that there are life in our words. And so we need to begin to align our words with the heart of God. So this book is so packed with not only is it for today, not only is it biblical, not only what is the power of our words. I talk about also 
the concept of um, what the Jewish culture knew then, um, today, and, and how we can carry this out. I give you example after example of how you can actually write blessings for your families, for your children, for your grandchildren, and how then you can step out in the marketplace and you can release blessings. So Here's one of my fun favorite stories, which I'm sure there'll be many more in the next couple of weeks as I take on this topic too and share a little bit more from my book with both Brandy and my mom, Connie. Um, but I was teaching this class. And so I was so excited about this class. And this is the first time I was teaching it. And there was this man, his name was Ron and he was sitting on the front and he was so excited about the class. But the more I started teaching, the more his arms crossed like this and he leaned back and I thought, Oh no, he is so upset with me. He is so mad at me because, and I'm thinking, did I not like, did I not tell him that it was scriptural and that it's biblical and get, make a case for that? And did I not explain it enough? And did I not dive in enough to some of these other topics? So, so what is he upset about? Cause I could tell he was upset. So as soon as class over, he made a beeline for me and he's like, Debbie, I have to talk to you. And I said, hi, yeah, what, what? He's like, I can't do it. And I'm like, well, what do you mean you can't do it? What do you mean you can't speak and pronounce blessings over other people? And I said, I mean, did I not, so you like, do you don't think they're biblical? And he goes, Nope, you, you pretty much covered that. Well, do you think they're not for today? Nope. Nope. You pretty much covered that. And I was racking my brain. Like I couldn't understand if, if I've proved they're biblical, if I prove that they're for today and, and it's something that God wants us to do. And it's in the old Testament and the scriptures are supposed to be life giving. And, you know, we're supposed to speak words of life and not death. Like what's the problem? And he goes, I can't do what you asked me to do. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he said, the example that you gave, I cannot bless somebody and say that God's going to hug them and kiss them and run them down and chase them with his love. I just can't do it. And I started to laugh then because I thought, oh, okay, I missed something very important. Of course he's not. He's a guy. I mean, he was big. He, he was like, you know, burly, tough, manly man. And he was like, He's like, I just can't do it, Debbie. And I was like racking my brain, like, okay, what am I going to do? And I'm like, okay, well, what's your, what's something that you like? And he goes, football. Of course, football at that time was something that I knew very little about. We watched the Super Bowl mostly for the commercials and the food. Um, my dad wasn't a sports guy. We always watched Westerns and Kung Fu movies on Sundays um, or old Jerry Lewis um, movies on Sundays as well never really football unless it was the Super Bowl. So of course it was something that I didn't know anything about. So I just brilliant Holy Spirit inspired moment said, okay, so go home this week and write one blessing, just one, just one blessing based on football because it's something you like. Cause when I was teaching them about blessings and how they could do this in the marketplace, I was sharing that they can actually take something that somebody's wearing, maybe their jewelry or maybe their ring or maybe a color that they're wearing or even, um, candy in the can, you know, cause when you go out to the, you know, check out of the, grocery line, you have all of these candy items right there. They want you to impulse buy them, but let's kind of redeem that marketing scheme right there and turn it back for the good. And I said, so I was teaching them like, you know, what about Skittles? Skittles are the rainbow of color. What does the rainbow represent? It represents the promises of God. And I shared this story because I'm the type of person that if I'm going to teach something, I better put it into action and I better be doing it before I ask you to do it so that I can say, I've actually been doing it. And here's what I found. And I can work out the rough patches before I commission you and ask you to go out and do it. So I had actually taken on this task and I had done this with um, a cat cashier at the grocery store about a mile from my house. And, um, I was just so nervous. Cause I was like, okay, I got to do this. Cause I'm going to be teaching on this for the first time. And so I just said to her, um, may God jump out and surprise you today. But I waited until the very end, like I'm getting like I've paid for all my stuff. Like I'm working myself up. I'm talking in my mind. Okay. I've got to release this blessing over her. I've got to do this. And so as she's handing me back my receipt, I said to her, may God, uh, jump out and surprise you today. Bye. And she's like, wait, what? God's going to surprise me. And I'm like, uh-huh. She's like, why would God want to surprise me? And I said, because you like surprises. And then I made a beeline for the door. Right. And the next time that I went in, I purposed to go to her line and she remembered me. And 
you know, I was so terrified of that, of that speaking that blessing, but it opened the door. It opened the door for us to have this conversation about how God does like to surprise us. And I asked her, so did God surprise you that day? Now it's been so many years since that has actually happened. I can't even remember, but I do remember that it was a positive um, response to what she was surprised with that day. And then I purposed that she was going to be my cashier. So every time I went, no matter how long her line was, I was standing in her line. So now I want to tell you just a little bit about the title of the book and how I came about the title for the book, because I was not intending the title to really be um, legacy, the lost art of blessing. Um, I was, you know, the one working title was, you know, speaking and pronouncing blessings. And then it was, um, the art of blessing. And then, I mean, there were so many things you can read uh, the whole commentary in the book of everything. And I remember like, we got down to the time when we're supposed to be like getting the cover design and doing all the stuff. And, and I was like, Lord, you've really got to give me this. And it really ties into um, how the Lord has kind of called our family to move clear across the country from where we grew up. I've lived in the Pacific Northwest my entire life, except for the last 18 months when God had said to us that he wanted us to move clear across the country to South Carolina. I was born and raised in Oregon, lived a significant number of years in Oregon. And then God moved us to Washington. We lived in Washington for a significant number of years of my life. And, um, and we pastored a church for eight years there. I was also on staff, uh, before we senior pastored. So lived a lot of life in the Pacific Northwest. If you would have told me, uh, 18 months to two years ago that God was going to tell me that I was going to move and live in South Carolina, I would have said, you're crazy. Um, and get behind me, Satan kind of thing. And so when God started speaking to our family about that. He was moving us. It was kind of a suddenly moment. And I've talked about this on the podcast before you can go back and check out previous episodes, but it was a suddenly moment where he was like, I don't want you to look at that for retirement in 12, 13, 14, 15 years down the road. I want you to do it now. And I remember saying to my husband, well, God wants us there now. And he goes, well, what do you mean by now? And I'm like, I don't know. God said now. And he goes, well, what do you mean? You have an idea. And I was like springtime. So this was like October of 2020 when God started really speaking to us about this. Um, he started kind of speaking a little before that. And I was having a ministry trip um, where I was promoting a book Um my dream journal had come out and also the Bible study for, uh, the gift of prophetic encouragement had come out and I was coming on a PR trip, uh, in October of 2020, because it got canceled earlier, uh, because COVID came out and they shut down some of the TV, uh, stations and I couldn't get in there to do that. So I was coming back to finish that. And so, um, it was during that time that God started speaking to us about coming now, being here in South Carolina now. Now, at this time, we're still pastoring the church. And I mean, our whole family lives on the West Coast. And I was just like, God says that he wants us there now. And he said, like, what do you mean now? And like spring. And he laughed because this is like October, right? And he's spring. No, like maybe summer if this is really God, but I don't think we're going to make this happen by spring. Let me just say that we made it at the end of May. We, we landed in South Carolina just before Memorial day. And we took possession of our house the Friday of Memorial day weekend. So still spring, not quite summer. So, um, yay God on that one. But when we started praying as a family, we, we told our kids and they're like, we want to come with you. We watched God do so many miracles to really get our family here. But as we were praying as a family, um, when I came back from that ministry trip, we told um, our family, this is what we feel that God is calling us to do. Uh, we need you to pray with us about this um, because we want to make sure that we're hearing God and we need to hear from God. And then at Thanksgiving time, we started talking about it, about, is this really what God is calling us to do? And at that time, the Lord had said, 
said, I was like, Lord, why, why are you wanting us to go now? What's going on? And if we're taking our whole family, what are you wanting to do? And the Lord started talking to me about legacy that he wanted us to, he, the move, part of the move was that we were supposed to leave a legacy that we would leave a legacy for our family, for our children and our children's children. But we would also leave a legacy in our community where he was planting us. And then we would leave a legacy for the people that would come to work for us because God started talking to us about being entrepreneurs, which, I mean, we've been in ministry. My husband is bivocational. He does work for Intel. So he's a software engineer. So he does do that. And then I have the ministry dare to hear, and then the podcast and I travel and I speak and I write books. Right. So I kind of do that and it's kind of ministry and it's on entrepreneurial, but God was really talking to us about being entrepreneurial and to really be in our community and to do business. And so we're still in process of praying some of those things through, but he really said, I want you to leave a legacy, not just for your family, but for your community and for all the families that are going to come and work for you. And so this concept of legacy was really on my heart. This concept of legacy was really on God's heart. And so I really started to dive in. Well, what's the difference between inheritance and what's the difference between legacy and how is this going to happen? So when it came time for this book, the Lord said, I've already given you the title of this book. He goes, it's all about legacy. And he goes, it's about redeeming the lost art of blessing because throughout scripture, I have talked about the importance of blessing numbers chapter six. There is an importance on blessing Deuteronomy chapter 28. There are blessings and curses for obedience. Blessing is a biblical concept that we have not captured and really fully do not understand. And it really is a lost art. And God's saying, I want you to redeem that. I want you to bring it back. And I want you not just to leave an inheritance for people because that's about a monetary thing. And it's about, there's also spiritual inheritance that Jesus has given for us, right? Because somebody has to die in order to pass those things on. Jesus paid the price for us. He died so that we could have an inheritance in the kingdom, but also in the natural, when somebody dies, they leave you an inheritance of things they work for and you get to start ahead. Um, you get to start where they left off, right? The, our ceiling is that next person's floor. But when you do a legacy, a legacy is imparting something into you, not so much giving something to you, but imparting a lasting legacy in you that's going to carry on for generations to come. And so when we step into the act and the art of blessing others, we can step into this powerful lost art of blessing, just like Joseph blessed his grandsons. And then it came to pass just like like um, Jacob blessed Esau and Jacob. I, yep, sorry, I said that wrong. Just like Jacob and Esau were blessed by Isaac, then those things came to pass. What he said was so powerful that, that God said, yes, I'm going to put my name on that and I am going to bless you. So we need to come back to the lost art of blessing. We need to understand that there is a treasure chest of things to open up inside of people that we can by our words, by placing our words and speaking blessings and putting God's name on it, we can begin to open spiritual doors for the Holy Spirit to target them for good. So legacy, the lost art of blessing people. This book, I have to say this book, 17 years in the making, there I put it on the shelf for a while. I thought, nope, this God gave this message to somebody else. Um, I tell the whole story in here, but he brought it back and he said, this is the time to release this. This is what my people need to understand right now. And so you'd, and honestly, as far as yes, there's kind of different aspects of it. There's the prophetic aspect of it, but it's not just that we can be intentional, right? With having kind words and speaking affirming words, we can be intentional about the blessings, right? And so this is what um, some samples from Psalms 97, 90 verse 17 says this, let the favor of the Lord of our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes. Establish the work of our hands. That's from the ESV. That's Psalms 90 verse 17. So 
because there's different levels really of blessing. So the kind and affirming word, I can see the hand and the favor of the Lord resting upon your life. We we say that to people all the time when we recognize something that they're doing that's good, right? We are blessing them, not necessarily intentionally, but we are speaking kind and affirming words to other people. And so what I did here is I took a scripture and I'm giving you examples of what this different levels of blessing are. And many of us are actually operating in it, but I'm saying, Let's be intentional about the words that we speak so that we open spiritual doors for Holy Spirit to target them for good. Okay, so then the next one is intentional blessing, right? So we can say, may you continue to increase in the Lord's favor and many others to see and may others see and know his hand is resting upon your life. So now we've taken it from kind and affirming words. I see this in you to may the Lord continue to do this in you and his hand of favor be upon you to then a prophetic blessing, right? So start where you're at. Maybe it's just the kind and affirming words, then intentionally speak blessings. And then we're going to do prophetic blessings where we're going to really be intentional about hearing what God wants to say about that and release that. So based out of Psalm 90 verse 17, this might be a prophetic blessing that you release over someone. Everything you put your mind and hand to will succeed because the Lord's favor is upon you and his hand rests upon you. So can you see how this is so important. And it's also so exciting that we could actually be speaking scripture over people and they might not even know that it's scripture that we can do. I also have a section in here about, well, what happens if you work in a place where you can't use God's name, or if you're in the marketplace and you, it's not safe for you to invoke God's name. How can you still intentionally release blessings over people to intentionally target the Holy spirit for good? So I, I am super, super excited about this book. And if you have bought it, could you do me a favor? Could you go leave me a review on Amazon? Because that is like gold to an author. It is like the best thing. So if you've gotten this book, if you purchased it from me from one of the conferences that I spoke at, or one of the events, or you purchased it from me directly and not off Amazon, what you just need to do is say, Hey, I purchased this book from Debbie. I saw her at a conference or take a picture of yourself in the book. And then you can leave a review because I have a couple out there, which is great, but it actually helps other people know, is this something that I want to read? Is this worth my time? So I just invite you, would you please consider leaving me a review is so important. It would be like the best gift that you could ever give me, um, for that. So I, I'm super excited about this book and about the legacy that it will not just leave on your life, but the legacy that will leave in all of the lives that you come into contact with, no matter who it is, no matter whether you know them, if they're in your sphere of influence, or you'll only meet them for but a moment that you can actually be intentional about not just speaking kind and affirming words, but intentionally speaking blessings and using your words to leave a lasting impact for people in the kingdom to allow Holy Spirit to draw them into the kingdom and bring them from darkness into light. And so I want to thank you for joining me this week on the podcast. It's always a delight and an honor to be with you. Thank you for all of our faithful listeners and viewers as well on YouTube. Thank you for that. So thank you for listening to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. I'm Deborah Kitterman. If you've been blessed at all in any way, we would love for you to do a couple of things. One, share, share, share this episode about. Uh, Go get your copy of Legacy, The Lost Art of Blessing. You can find it on Amazon. You can get it off my website, Um, but go get copies, give it as gifts. It's a perfect book for that. I'm super excited. Brandy did the cover for this, and it is by far one of my favorite uh, covers that she has done for me. She's done three of the six books that I've um, written and um, this one I'm super it gave us some fits but I'm super excited about this one Um, and the second thing you can do is if you're not following us if you'll follow us on YouTube also if you'll subscribe to us on whatever podcast listening stations are and if you could leave us a review that would be awesome and then again share 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 so I look forward to having you join us next week on another episode of dare to hear the podcast until then God bless and goodbye Cause there's peace in my prayer